All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the E300 motor overload. This is the Ethernet version. As you can see, it's Ethernet. So we're going to talk about how to access the web page using these dials right here. This is There's three dip switches on the inside of this top lip. If you see this slides down, you will not be able to access the web page from this if you do not have those. Now, um, the reason for accessing the web page is to set the parameters or you can do a backup of the E300, which is gonna be in a JSON file, so just keep that in mind. It's gonna be just to backup or restore the E300. Say you got, um, you ordered all, all your stuff from an Intel center, and you wanna make sure everything is backed up before you actually start, because if you plug in your PLC program or your, your actual processor at that time, it will default that E300. And if the bucket's pre-wired, it's pre-wired for the configuration, and you don't know that configuration, this, this is the exact reason why you would go in and grab a backup. But in case you just want to go in there and edit some changes, you can do that as well. Um, now, this is not the only way to edit the parameters. You can do that from the EC or the, the actual Studio 5000 program. But let's go ahead and talk about the web page. So my current IP address is 192.168.143. Now, you'll see that I do not have access to that, right? So it says it refuses access, although I do have conductivity. You can see that right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the dials, okay? So I'm going to drop, use the drop down right here. I'm going to change these dials right here to from 999 to 0, 0, 0. Okay. And once I have these set, once I have these set 0, 0, 0, right? I'm going to power cycle the actual E300. You have to power cycle every time you change the dip switches or else it will not take it does take a second for this thing to power up so just keep in mind and understand that this you know does take a second to actually power up um, so getting communication back will, will take just a second when it comes to that so uh, what we're going to do though now that it, it is powering back up so as soon as we get conductivity we're going to go ahead and go to our web page again which i still have pulled up by the way right so we're going to get to our web page and we're going to figure out how to sign into it. Well, there's a trick to signing into it that a lot of people don't know. And I'm going to talk about that just here in a second. So as soon as we get conductivity, I'm going to go into the web page and I'm going to tell you how to actually access this. There is no default password. The password is the actual serial number for the actual device. So we do have the, the E300 conductivity now. If you open up the web page and you merely just click enter again, now we have the username. We have the ability to put the username in and we're going to put the password. Username is going to be all, it's always going to be admin administrator. So administrator and the password, remember I said this is going to be the serial number. So we're going to open up RS links and we're going to go to, down to configuration. Now in configuration of RS links, you're going to see the actual serial number. So module configuration. And then as soon as this opens, we're going to go ahead and grab that serial number. And then this, this is the tricky part to it. Is it you're going to have, let's see, for some reason it did not pull it up. So let's open it up again. We're going to grab the serial number right here. We're going to put it in here and then paste it in here. And this will give you access. Okay. So now, you have what it's going to do if this is the very first time you've ever signed into the web page it's going to ask you to change the password so i'm going to put the serial number in like i did before and i'm going to put an easy password something like rockwell something like that so that we know what it is you can put whatever you want as long as you remember what it is because else you'll have to default it and at this point we do have access to the actual web page of the e300 which again, you can come back here and change all the parameters if you want to. You can change, um, you come in here and do diagnostics if you wanted to do diagnostics. The really cool thing about all this is the backup and restore or password configuration. Um, the backup and restore, it's going to, any kind of admin privilege is going to make you um, enter in the ad, admin password again. So administrator. So this is why you, you make sure you understand what the password is and you understand what the user is. And remember, we changed it to Rockwell, so we're going to type in Rockwell. And now we can go to backup. 
Now, if we hit backup, I want, to, I want you to show. I want to show you this. This is going to be a .json file. This is not going to be something you can upload to Studio 5000 and then have the configuration. This is merely for going on the web page and and restoring the actual device. So if you got like an Intel Center and you you backed it up, but then you accidentally like defaulted it, or you you had an Intel Center and you had one go out. And then let's say for instance, or you had a pre, let's just say you had a pre-built bucket, everything was wired up working, and then the E300 went out, you had to replace it with a brand new one. All you would have to do is do this, set the IP address to it, go into the web page, and then as soon as you got the backup, all you would have to do is click restore. So you choose the file that you want to put put back in, and you click restore, and it restores that device. And then you're back up and running in a mere couple of minutes, right? You don't really have to go and do anything magical inside of Studio 5000 or RS Logix. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is a really handy trick, a really handy tool to use uh, and make sure you keep track of your passwords. Um, you can always default these things to by 888 as the default and it's power cycle. But if, that, if you do that, it will default all the parameters. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the key here is making sure you have the parameters. So what I do for security purposes is after I get it, uh, the web page access and I get it the way I want to, I change it back to 999 because I don't want anybody going in and just being able to access the web page at any given time or changing any of my parameters. So what I do is I go in there and I change it to 1999 and then I power cycle one more time. And when I power cycle, again, why do we power cycle? We power cycle because we change the dip switches, right? So at this point, we're going to come in and wait till we have connectivity in RS links. And I'm going to show you that I no longer have access to the web page. So in order to have access to the web page, we have learned that we have to have the dip switches on zero, zero, zero. The first time we sign in, we use the administrator as the password or the username and the password is going to be the serial number. Um, so just keep that in mind. I mean, those are two very, very important things that probably could save you a load of time. I had to research this the hard way through uh, knowledge base and talk to people and this and that. So it, it really took a long time. The point I try to make these videos is try to, you know, make things that that gap, that learning gap or maybe you're looking for a problem to solve or you're trying to solve this problem yourself and it could save you some time. So at this point, let's go back to the web page, and I'm going to show you that I no longer have access. So now we have a secure device. We have our backup. We have everything. We have everything working. We do have the ability to use that. Again, you can use this process to back up your E300 Ethernet overloads. You can use this process if you have one running and it goes out and you actually then you can actually go on the web page after you set the IP address up and restore it and literally be back up and running in minutes. Um, or when you if you, like I said, it's always the best practice to back everything up or you can go in there and use the web page to change the parameters if you need to change the parameters that way as well. Again, not everybody uses Studio 5000, but they do use the E300. And not everybody wants to go into Studio 5000 and change their actual parameters from that point as well. Again, if you do make a change in, in Studio 5000 parameters, then make sure you do the due diligence and backing it up through the web page anyway, so that you do have that JSON file to back up and restore when you need to. You, you always have the uh, ability to automatic device configuration, but sometimes that does fail. So let's keep that in mind and let's me personally, I like to do the best practice and just keep this as simple as possible. So hopefully you learned a lot on that video and we'll see you guys on the next one.